Hey kids, Miss Kulkani here. In this video, we will continue with organic chemistry. And in fact, we are going to learn how to name esters. But before that, let's find out how esters look like. This is a general formula for ester. And if you look carefully, I listed those groups as R1 and R2. These are nothing but alkyl groups or they could be also aryl groups. Both of these could be considered as alkyl or aryl groups. And they are separated by the functionality which is COO. And here's an example of real ester. And we are going to find out how to name an ester. But before doing that, let's go through some basic rules about naming an ester. The very first thing, we need to make sure that we are going to use the naming for carboxylic acid here. And then we are going to divert it to naming of the ester. Why are we doing this? Because an ester is actually made up of an alcohol and an carboxylic acid. When they two react, the reaction results into an ester. And we call that as condensation reaction. Let's actually see how the reaction takes place. So maybe if I have R1COOH as my carboxylic acid and if that is going to react with an alcohol and I'm going to put that OH group for second alcohol on the other side which will help me find out what my compound is going to be. So what it does is the OH group takes the hydrogen from the acid and then what is remaining is an ester. So RCOO that comes from the acid part over here. And we get this alkyl group that comes from the alcohol. If you understand this, naming ester is pretty easy. Because let's look at the third rule. It says the part of the name that comes from alcohol, we attach YL alkyl and the other part which comes from the acid like this part over here we take the carboxylic acid name like maybe ethanoic acid propionic acid and we simply end that with oate so if this is going to be suppose butanoic acid you end up getting from butane to butanoate noate that's the part which we add for the Esther, how about numbering? We number the carbon atom which is closest to carbonyl group first, irrespective of where the alkyl substituents could be. And the last thing is the parent chain which is ending with E should be ending with OATE like methanoate, ethanoate and so on. Let's work on this first example. Over here, you can always break up an ester in two parts. Get that part which is the alkyl part which comes after oxygen from carbonyl. So you can clearly see that this part was actually coming from the acid and this part was coming from the alcohol before our condensation reaction. So whatever part you're getting from alcohol, that is going to be a substituent which will be methyl group CH3 is just one single carbon atom. So it's methyl group. And when we look at the acid, we start numbering from this carbonyl carbon and we get four carbon atom. Four stands for butane. This was initially an acid. So it was butanoic acid. What you're going to do is we are going to use that butane and we are going to add the ending word O-A-T-E. So it is methyl butanoate. Let's work on the next one now. And the very first thing we are going to do is split that molecule into two parts. And when you are splitting up, make sure you are getting that alkyl group away. Let's find out what is the name of that alkyl group. That has two carbon atom. That means the group will be ethyl group. So let me write down the substitute which we have there first. Start numbering from carbonyl there. And we got 
six carbon atoms there. So, six stands for hexa and it is an ester because of this bond in between. So, it will be hexane and we are going to end up that with this. So, the name becomes ethyl hexanoate. Pretty simple, right? Let us work on some cyclic compounds now. This tells us that we got an ester there and the breakage point is right over here. What is the name of the alkyl group? That is ethyl again, two carbon atom chain. And what about the compound, the cyclic chain? What do we have here? If you look carefully, that is pentane. And if I had to draw the parent acid, that will be COOH. That will be cyclopentanoic acid. So this will be ethyl and we change that pentanoic acid to pentanoate. The last ending part is different. Let's take one more example. What do you think this is? That is a benzene ring. And we can just split that into two parts. The alkyl group here is methyl group. So our naming begins with methyl and now the ester is coming from benzoic acid. So, we are going to make that as benzoate, adding that last part as O-A-T-E. It's methyl benzoate. Was that pretty simple? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.